good to be back with you. And today I've got a dynamics problem. Today I want to talk about something called simultaneous impact. Now let's say I've, I'm throwing a projectile, and the projectile is dense and streamlined, so I don't have to worry about aerodynamic drag. And let's say I'm throwing at less than a target that's less than the maximum range of the projectile. In that case, there's two different paths that the projectile could take and still get to the target. There's a low solution and a high solution. One of them is above 45 degrees and one of them is below 45 degrees. Now I'm assuming I've got a, a target that's 100 meters away from the launch point and um, I've got an initial velocity of 50 meters per second. What I want to do is see if I can figure out a way to throw two projectiles, separated a little bit in time, so they both get to the target at the same time. Well, the, the high solution, the target, the ball's going to be in the air quite a while compared to this. So what I'll probably want to do is throw along that path, wait a little while, and then throw along this path and set it up so that both projectiles, both, uh, say they're steel balls, both of them get to the target at the same time. That's called simultaneous impact. So let's figure out how to do that. Now the first thing I'm going to need is an expression for y in terms of x because I'm going to need to figure out what those two angles are. Well, here's how we do this. I'm going to write out the stock equation for position as a function of time. Okay. Eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this for t and substitute in. But here, here's the, the uh, position as a function of time in the x direction. Now, I said there was no aerodynamic drag, so that means there's no acceleration in the x direction. So ax goes to zero, and I'm starting at the origin of the coordinate system, so x zero goes to zero. And what I've, the other thing I want to note here is that v zero x is v zero times cosine theta. So I've got x equals v zero times t times cosine theta. All right, so there's that. Now I'm going to solve this for t. I'm going to make sure I keep in the frame where I've got plenty of room. Okay, so t is going to be x divided by v0 cosine theta. All right, so that's an important equation. We're going to need that one here in a second. There's motion in the x direction. Well, I need motion in the y direction as well. So let's write down that same equation. Okay, now the acceleration of gravity is g. Now, I've got y positive going up. G is going to point down, so I'm going to have to put a minus sign there. So t squared plus v zero y times t plus y zero. Okay, the only thing that I get to cross out here, let me get out of your way here, where the light's a little better. The only thing I get to cross out there is y zero. Okay, that goes to zero because I'm starting from the origin of the coordinate system. v zero y is v zero sine theta. And that's about it. So let me write this out here. Minus one half g t squared plus v zero t yeah, t sine theta. So there's my expression for y as a function of t. I don't want y as a function of t. I want y as a function of x. So what I'm going to do is take this expression right here. Everywhere up here I see a t. I'm going to plug that in. And when I do that, I get y as a function of x. It's minus 1 half g x squared v0 cosine v0 squared cosine squared theta plus v0 t. Oops, hang on a second here. Sine theta cosine theta. X there. All right, so there we go. Now I get to cross that out because those two uh, are the same thing. And sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta. So I'm going to make one more simplification here. Minus one half g x squared v zero squared cosine squared theta. It's terrible too. There we go plus x tangent theta. And that's y sub x. So here's the expression I need. This is what's going to make this work. Okay? Because what I get to do now, make sure I stay in frame, okay? Um, what I get to do now is put in all the numbers I know. I know that at the target, y equals 0. 
I know at the target x equals 100 and I know that the, the initial velocity is 50. So when I plug all those numbers in, I know g is 9.81. So when I plug all those in, what I'm going to get is an expression that has only theta in it. So let's write that out. 0 equals minus 1 half times 9.81 times 100 squared over, let's see, 50 squared cosine squared theta plus 100 tangent theta. Okay, so there's an expression right there and where the only unknown is theta. One equation and one unknown. So it seems like I ought to be able to solve that. So go to your scientific calculator to MathCat or something like that and you're going to find out that there are two values less than 90 degrees that solve that expression. One of them, theta 1, that's the low angle, is 11.552 degrees and theta 2 equals 78.448 degrees. Okay, so there's that and that. Make sure those are in the frame. Got it. Okay, so those are the two the two launch angles. There's no very good equal sign, is it? There. So those are the two launch angles. The low one is 11 and a half degrees pretty much, and the other one, the high angle, is 78 and a half degrees pretty much. All right, so all I need to do now is figure out how long it takes to get from the launch point to the target, and I get to use, oops, I just erased it. I'm going to use this expression right here. T equals x over v0 cosine theta. All right? Um, to find t, I'll put in 100 for my x. That's the distance from the launch point to the target put in 50 for my, my uh, velocity in meters per second, and cosine theta. I've got two different values of cosine theta because I've got two different values of theta. Work those out. T1 turns out to be 2.041 seconds. Okay, so for the low, the low shot right here, it takes a little over two seconds to go uh, from the launch point to the target. T2, the high solution, where it's going to be in the air a lot longer, I get 9.987 uh, seconds. Okay, so all I got to do now is figure out the, the uh, delta between those two, the difference between those two. Okay, so delta T, okay, I'm in frame, yes. Delta T turns out to be just this, the difference between the two, it's 7.946 uh, seconds. Okay, and that's the final solution. So what I found find out is if I launch along the high path, and then wait 7.946 seconds. Okay, so the, the the balls in the air hasn't gotten to the target yet. Uh, after 7.946 seconds after launching the high solution, I launch along the low solution. Both balls will get to the target at the same time, and that's simultaneous impact. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.